Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Center 2, or rather Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> this is the Kerbal Space Center, of course. But this is not the second Kerbal, I guess this is the second Kerbal Space Center. Okay, well sure, this is Kerbal Space Center 2, I guess. Absolutely great, that's definitely the name of the game. We're going to hop directly into the VAB because we need to do a moon landing at this point. And how do we want to do that? Well, first things first, we are absolutely going to need to build this from scratch. Now, this is currently in the favorites. Okay, so we're going to hop into here. We're going to start with a Mark I Explorer. And I always forget that in KSP2, scrolling the mouse wheel does zooming. It does not move you up and down. <laughs> I'm just going to put that there for right now. That is absolutely fine. We're going to need to return this thing eventually, of course. So we should probably put some form of parachutes on it. I think we'll put a Mark 16 parachute here. I really, really hate the size of that. <laughs> This is clearly sized to have a much larger parachute on it. In this game, does this have a reaction wheel? It does. Okay, so noted on the reaction wheel there. Fantastic. I'm going to put a couple of drogue shoots on this, even though I feel like in KSP2 it's a lot less necessary to have drogues. We'll have it on here just as a... Uh, ju just as a... What's the term I'm looking for? I've completely forgotten my train of thought. Okay, fantastic. We're off to a great start here. So the drogue shoots are here as insurance. That's the term we're looking for. So that's all great. We don't need a reaction wheel, so that should be fine. We probably should have some form of solar panel on this. I'm going to put on a pair of solar panels like that. There we go. We should absolutely have a science junior on here. 100%. I kind of don't like the size of it there. So maybe putting it here with the parachute on top makes more sense. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So that'll be fine. And as far as the design of the actual lander goes, I have a particular design that I like to do, which would be something kind of like this. And then we'd have radial decouplers. So we do four of these. Now, the problem here is we don't have fuel lines. This design would normally rely on fuel lines. So, we'll have to see if we can do... Actually, um, we'll have to see if we can just move the fuel manually. That'll be okay. Now, I'm concerned about having roundified tanks here. It'll be a little bit of extra weight. So, 0 0.051 tons if we do something like this. However, we're not really spaced out enough to decouple those. So I think we're going to go with the larger decouplers here. That'll be these guys. And we would put this on like so. There we go. And then I would put stack separators, or I guess stack decouplers, up here. Like that. Now, I want to test to make sure that the decoupler goes with. So let's save this, and I'm going to call this... And we'll... Sure, the new workspace is fine. We're going to call this the Moon Lander. Okay, so we'll save that. Do we want to overwrite our existing vehicle build with the same name? Presumably that's because of the workspace here. Yeah, I guess that's fine. So, sure, whatever. We'll overwrite it. I guess that's okay. We can rebuild the previous one easily enough. So that's okay. We do want to have a Terrier here. So I'm going to put a Terrier right there and then we're going to need to have some form of strut here so the strut is going to go from here although we'll want that in quad symmetry from here to here there we go and then i'm also going to strut this up top just because i like to make sure that this is going to be nice and rigid so something along the lines of that should do now the question is what's the thrust to weight of this i mean obviously at kerbin that's 0.43 but we put it in the vacuum here. Well, it's in vacuum. We put it over the moon, though, and that's 2.57. So that is much better. Now, that's 493 meters per second, but we're going to need to enable fuel crossfeed here. Okay, so that is giving us 1,072 meters per second. I bet all of these didn't enable crossfeed. <laughs> 
Okay, it did not do the symmetry crossfeed. Okay, noted. That's more like it. So that's four kilometers per second right there. That's plenty to land on. Now we're going to need some form of landing legs, which should be under one of these. Structures? No. Ground. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to go with LT1s, and those are going to go approximately... Well, it would look best if they were about like that, I think. What would that look like extended? That's not a lot of space there, but it is nice and wide. Maybe we should move these down a little bit here. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. I don't want to grab these. I want to rotate and translate. There we go. Cool. So I want to move this guy down. That'll be fine for now. Okay, we'll be in select mode, and let's unextend these for the time being. So now we need to deliver this thing. But before we do, I'm going to save it and, yes, overwrite it. And we're going to put this out on the pad. Obviously, it's not going to go anywhere, right? That is definitely true. The thing that I want to do here is I want to decouple this guy and see what happens here. That's what I thought. Okay, so now we need to revert back to the VAB. And we are going to flip those around. So, it's actually giving a loading bar for that. That's interesting. That's good to know. So, it takes a hot minute to go back to the VAB. Absolutely understood. So, we're going to detach this and not detach you. I want to detach this, flip it around in quad symmetry, and do that. Now I'm going to save it again, and we'll put it out on the pad. Cool. Now what we want to do is, well, for one thing, I can see that this attachment is really strange, but yeah, that isn't going to be very helpful, is it? Yeah, we really kind of need to know a little bit more than that. So I guess we'll revert this back to the VAB again. We'll see if it takes a while this second time, or if it just, like, takes a while to load the first time. Okay, noted. I mean... We'll probably cut out this loading when we do it in the future, because it definitely takes a little while, but that is absolutely noted. The main problem here right now is this strut, and I want to detach that strut in quad symmetry. There we go. And just get rid of it. I want this strut to connect up over here, and this strut to connect up over here, like that. Okay, cool. I actually don't want this strut to connect to the decoupler, but rather to connect down. That is not what I wanted that to connect to. Okay, hang on. What are we connected to here? Not what we want, that's for sure. I want to connect to the tank. Okay, and it looks like this strut deconnected. Cool. So that should be fine now. So let's put that out on the pad. And the main thing that we're checking here is that this decouple, the decoupler goes with. Now, we can't actually tell. <laughs> so, yep, the decoupler does indeed go with. We can determine that now. Perfect. So, with that determined, we're good to go. Why is there still these particles going off? We don't have any fuel on. Okay, whatever. We're going to revert back to the VAB again, and I will see you guys once this loading screen is done. So here we are, reverted back, and that is absolutely great. So now we know that our decouplers are decoupling correctly, and we need to lift this thing. So, first things first, we are going to do a decoupler here. This will be a TD12 stack decoupler. Although, we should probably make sure staging up here is good. So, this is going to be the main parachute. These are the drogues. We're going to want the, to get the drogues out first, for sure. That's just the way drogues work. And then these stack separators are fine. Yeah, this is going to actually end up being earlier. So this would end up being moved to, like, up here. Although it doesn't really care for dragging these around, does it? It does not. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, something like that. Now, we'll put in this decoupler, which is not supposed to be in this stage. That's this decoupler. Get out of that stage. Okay. 
This stage shouldn't exist, and the decoupler goes here. Cool. So now we're going to need a transfer stage. This stage is intended to get us to the moon and into a reasonable orbit. So we're going to want to have, I mean, a T-800 would be ideal here. We'll see what our weight goes. This might get reduced down. So that'll be a Terrier engine. And then we would have a stack decoupler here. And then I think that all I want here is a pair of T-800s here. This is obviously not going to be high enough thrust to weight to lift all of this, but that's okay. So for now, what I want to do is I want to put in a T-45 swivel engine here. We don't have access, and where is that in this? That's down here? Okay. We don't have access to fuel lines, so that's going to make this a little bit more complicated. I would normally do liquid-fueled side stages here, but I think we're going to have to go SRBs. If we look at this, we can see this is Kerbin Atmosphere, 0 .0, or rather 0 0.64 here. We obviously need more thrust to weight, and that is absolutely understood. We're going to put on some additional radial decouplers in quad symmetry here. This is going to be a big boy, and we're going to put this about here. Okay, and then we're going to do SRBs because we don't have access to... Do we want to do kickbacks here? 670 kilonewtons? I mean, that would kind of be the way to go. These are huge. Absolutely huge. And I'm wondering what that thrust to weight is. 1.92? That's interesting. That's very interesting. Potentially a little bit overkill, but it's very Kerbal. <laughs> no doubt about that. So here's what I'm thinking right now. We grab struts, and we strut from here to here, just to make sure we're nice and rigid there. We could even do it on the other side as well. So that would go from here to here, something like that. Then we could put in something along the lines of just nose cones up on top of this, like that. I don't think the aerodynamics would be that big of a concern here, but maybe it might be necessary. We would definitely need some form of struts down here. So that would end up being a connection from here to here. And then I would also want to do a connection on the bottom side from perhaps here to perhaps here. Something like that. It's intriguing to see how this would go, for sure. We can combine together a few of these stages, so something like that, and then this separator here would be combined with that engine, and this would be our staging overall. I have no idea how this thing is going to fly. It's going to be very interesting, for sure. 1.91 thrust to weight is considerable. And we can see that this is 0.73 thrust to weight here. This is in vacuum. This is actually going to be in atmosphere. So this stage is going to be considerably, considerably underpowered once we get to it. So we have to hope that these push us fast enough that it doesn't matter that this stage is underpowered. That would be the idea. Or we combine the stages together. I kind of don't want to do that. I want to see how this goes. This is going to be very interesting. So we'll save this. We'll put it out on the pad. And launching just with these SRBs is certainly viable. No doubt about that. Let's, uh, let's head out, I think. We're going to have our countdown here. And off we go. Beautiful. We shouldn't need to do any real rotation here because we're in quad symmetry, so that should be relatively fine, all things considered. And the question is, just how far is the are these SRBs going to propel us? I don't know that it'll be far enough. Our speed isn't all that high. It's not going up tremendous. Whoa, I'm not doing this. We are tumbling. Okay. 180 is not the direction we want to go. 
Do these not have gimbal in this game? It looks like they don't. Okay, so that lesson is learned. There's no cache in this game, so reverting doesn't matter. All we would do is just decouple this and bring Jeb down with parachutes. So I'm just gonna revert this back to the VAB. And what we're going to do is, yeah, we're gonna have this loading screen. I'm not gonna cut it out because I have things to say. What we're going to do here is we're going to have to deal with the lack of gimbal. So what that means is we need to have some form of gimbling here, right? Basically, what that means is we need to group these together. But my question is, these engines, how long do they burn for as opposed to this stage, right? So the burn time is 1 minute and 2 seconds. The burn time here is 1 minute and 56 seconds. Okay, that will work. So that's fine. We can burn it like this. We have a lot more thrust to wait, but we could add more fuel here down to about a T-400. About like that. Extend this length even further. And what engine is this? Uh, yeah, this is correct. Extend that burn even further. Yes, this will be lower thrust to weight, but because we're burning from the beginning, that thrust to weight will be increasing over this one minute and two seconds. So it'll be about half burnt out by the time we detach these guys. This will also give us some access to gimbling, and hopefully we won't have that tumble. If we do continue to have that tumble, then we're going to need to put some fins in here. Let's launch this and see how this goes. I'm expecting this to go reasonably well. It's going to be very peppy off the pad. Over two thrust to weight is a lot of thrust to weight. I'm going to skip the countdown for this one. And off we go. That is definitely peppy off the pad. No doubt about that. Those SRBs turning the night into day, absolutely. That is what SRBs do, to be fair. So we should be able to hold this attitude much better, even just with the gimbling from this engine. And yeah, you can see how the drain here is going. So that's looking fine. We're right on target here. We're at about 10 kilometer apoapsis. 12. 15 kilometers. We've got good thrust to weight for now. That will change. So I want to push us up as close as we can to orbit here, but I do want to start getting some horizontal speed. We don't want to overshoot this too far though, because that could be a big problem. So we're just going to slowly bring this over. SRBs are going to be burnt out fairly soon. So I'm just going to lock us to prograde for right now. And once the SRBs detach, that's when... Okay, this is really high on the apoapsis. Okay, SRBs are detached. It is really high apoapsis. I was hoping that we wouldn't target quite this high of an apoapsis, though. Uh, please hold stability. Don't bring us back to Procreate. Thank you. I want to land this right about here or so. So I was hoping to do the 100... Ooh, this is really trying to tumble around a bit here. Let's just let it sit here for the moment. We're in space right now. I was hoping to hit the 100, 100 kilometer mark for that mission, but this'll do. So our apoapsis is here. We're going to need a lot of horizontal speed. We had a lot of vertical speed there. Okay, this is a whole lot. Something isn't right here. It must be burn time. Okay, so let's revert that back to launch this time. And I think we just need a different ascent profile. We went too high. So that indicates that we need to start our gravity turn a little bit earlier there. And that makes a lot of sense. We definitely went a little too high there. So let's try that one more time with a different ascent profile here. This thing has some interesting aerodynamics, shall we say. Whoa. That is uh, exciting. I skipped the launch countdown, but it also uh, kind of detached the SRBs. <laughs> 
That is pretty funny. I'm shocked it didn't go worse than that. Okay, let's let's try this one more time, and this time not have the SRBs detached. I must have accidentally triple clicked it rather than double clicking, or it was already skipping the countdown. I'm not sure which, but that was funny. I like it. Okay, are we actually counting down? Okay, we're not counting down. That's why it did that. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So with us actually, you know, having the SRBs attached, that's a good sign. And we're going to start this gravity turn considerably sooner. The thrust to weight is quite high in this low portion, and that means that we want to transition a lot of this into horizontal speed instead of vertical. So I'm going to start this at an apoapsis of about 10 kilometers or so. So about now. Ooh, we're tumbling. Wait, wait, we got it. We're under control-ish. Ish. Emphasis on ish. This is spicy. No doubt about it. I want to be at 45 degrees right now. I'm watching our SRB position. Okay, let's hold here. Actually, let's just lock to prograde right now. SRBs are going to run out of fuel shortly. Okay, SRBs are detached. I'm watching this heat gauge here. We are pushing up through the atmosphere here, though, and with this lower thrust to weight, yeah, this is going to start going down. So that looks good. I want to be at horizontal right now. So let's move this up to 90 degrees, put it at horizontal, put this in stability assist, please. Okay, right about here. Apoapsis of 66. We're targeting 100 because we do have a mission for that. So that looks good. We're just going to go for that sweet, sweet 100. We definitely are running some heat up here, but that's to be expected. And we just need to get a bunch of horizontal speed. We can see our time to apoapsis is currently going down, which is fine. Apoapsis is now officially in space. We just need to get a bunch of horizontal speed here. We are about to burn out our first stage, which is reasonably fine. Our altitude is pretty decent as well. Although I want to have this right on the horizon here. Okay, right about there. Cool. This stage is going to be gone in a moment. Cool. Let's switch to our vacuum optimized engine. This is currently saying only 740 meters per second. That's probably due to the weight of this thing. Hmm. So we might have a lack of DV here. Or we might have to burn more than expected from here. That's potentially understood. We might just call this a test flight of this system and just target that 100 kilometer marker. We'll see how much DV we have left. I mean, we almost certainly have enough to do what we need to on this, but I was hoping for this to be our stage that transfers us to the moon and gets us into orbit, not necessarily for it to be the stage that uh, <laughs> gets us into orbit of Kerbin. So that's noted. We see our time to apoapsis is still going down, so that's fine. I think we're definitely going to need a little bit more oomph in the first and second stages. That's fine. We can definitely do that. Well, really more in the first stage. The second stage is probably okay-ish. Ish. So, I mean, that'll get us into orbit for sure. We're targeting that 100-kilometer orbit. And that's okay. At this point, I'm reasonably fine with targeting 100-kilometer. Time to apoapsis is still going down, but it's going down slowly. This seems fine. But the second stage here is definitely underpowered. The first stage is also slightly underpowered. For what we're targeting for this so this is going to end up not being a flight to the moon i think but we can still get missions done here so that's okay 
Time to Apoapsis is still going down, and we can see our Apoapsis isn't going up very much right now, but that will start to change very, very soon as our velocity approaches orbital velocity. Let's just lock this to prograde at this point. There's not much point in not being on prograde, so that's fine. We're still about 30 seconds from Apoapsis, and this is looking good. We can see our Periapsis is looking pretty decent. That's where the majority of this change is right now. Cool. Time to Apoaps Apoapsis will start increasing shortly. And we're going to be targeting that 100 kilometer marker. Yep, it's going up now. Looks good. We're going to be entering orbital mode shortly. We've got 200 meters per second left after getting to this stage. So yeah, that stage is absolutely underpowered. Uh, this is a pretty heavy payload, so that's not necessarily shocking. Okay. Apoapsis is going up 90 kilometers. Okay. I'm just slowly lifting that up. That'll do. I think it said it needed to be between 99 and 100. So actually, we might have to flip this thing around to retrograde. And just drop it very, very slightly. Maybe it was between 99 and 101. We should probably double check that. So let's hop back to the mission control real quick here. So this was 99 and 101. We're actually fine. Okay, so I want to go back to the tracking station. And for Kerbin, we've got this guy, the Moonlander 1. So this is our first test flight of the Moonlander, and I think it's very, very obvious at this point that we, well, we do have the Delta V to get to the moon and probably to land on it, and even probably to get back. The question is, how much do we want to risk it, right? So I want to create a maneuver here. I want to get this. This periapsis brought up. Oh, this is the wrong periapsis. Okay, I want to be able to see while we're doing this maneuver what our new periapsis is going to be. But I guess all all I'm going to do is I'm going to burn like at this apoapsis. And we'll just do it here. There's probably a way to see what I want to see, but I don't know what it is. So for now, we'll just do it manually. We don't actually even need the maneuver. We know what we need to do. We need to burn prograde close enough to the apoapsis here so that the periapsis is raised up without the apoapsis going up by too much. So we're currently only about 15 seconds away from the apoapsis, so this is a good time to burn as soon as we're in position here. And we're just raising that periapsis up. It needs to go up above 99. And there we go. So there is our reward available. Let's pop back over to the KSC, or rather to the mission control. So there's a perfect circle completed. That'll get us 100 science. So that's something anyway. And then it's eccentric. Raise our apoapsis to 300 kilometers. Okay, that's really easy. We can do that right now, but it is time to put a cut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to raise our apoapsis up to 300 kilometers and complete this orbit. I would very much like to land on the surface of the moon, and I think that we can do it. The question is, do we have the DV to return? And I think we're not going to do that with this flight. I want to boost up the power level of our existing systems. And in order to do that, we'll want to go probably to R&D eventually. How much are we going to need to grab medium orbital rockets and fuel lines? Because that will help us tremendously. That'll be a total of 530 research. Okay, we'll see how far we get on that. But it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to raise our apoapsis up, and we're probably going to take this thing as far as we can, potentially. We might have to get, like, a Jeb rescue mission or something going on. We might try to land on the moon with this and just see how it goes. We've got a lot of DV, for sure. 
but it's going to be spicy no matter what. You can leave your offerings a note to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamers, Shadow Wolf, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.